I got three new decks for you to try in Pauper this 2024. And today, I will show you why this player won't play Pauper again. But first, we got Mono Black Control. Who needs to splash green and make your mana base worse to play Avenging Hunter? Instead, play Trail Dress Storch, an artifact that gives you the initiative, but more importantly, is colorless and one mana cheaper, meaning that you can play it as early as turn 1 thanks to cards like Dark Ritual or earlier with Pit Bog, depending on the situation. The rest of the deck is packed with many removals to protect your emblems in a deck that looks like a meme but it's truly strong in the current meta. The first game is against the Mir Terror, a deck whose primary goal is to put big creatures like Tolarian Terror or Gurmag Angler into the field for cheap. However, Mono Black Control is somewhat of a bad matchup for it, as it not only has the right answers to deal with their threats, but also her creatures are hard to kill, as their primary answer, Snuff Out, is useless. <laughs> Our goal for now is to keep the board clean, and we remove their Augur of Bolas at the end of their turn so we can untap and play your turn of the Black Rose freely and take the Monarch immediately. Getting this emblem against Blue Decks is huge, as they lack the ways to take them right away, unless they run Monarch on their own. With that in mind, our goal now is to kill every creature they play, and with multiple removals at our disposal, it should be an easy task to do despite the many counters they may run. We cycle our trolls for lands. In this case, the cottages are excellent at returning them to the top of our library. In case we get our turn killed, we can get it back to replay it. The opponent counters a Lembas, but we are just happy to attack, draw a card and pass the turn. They kill our creature and play an Augur of Bolas and pass so we kill it by the end of the turn. On tap, play your Kotash and try to resolve a Cribrats, but unfortunately it met a counter. Still, we are happy to draw a card thanks to the Monarch. However, getting rid of two creatures from our top on side might be tricky, so my best bet is to kill one at least and use the turn as a blocker for the other. The good thing now is that they have just a couple of cards in hand, and likely they are holding at least a snuff out they can't cast, so we should be in a good spot. We traded the creatures, but they resolve another terror, so we try to kill it on our turn. After failing, we just play a second turn and passed. Now, the problem is that the opponent found a turn of their own, and even if I kill the terror with the snuff out, I still need an answer for the turn to take the monarch back. So, all I can do now is to play a troll and pass to attempt to steal the emblem next turn. The opponent just plays a land and passes, and back on my turn, I decide to kill the terror and attack with both creatures. In retrospect, maybe I should have stayed back with the one to keep the blocker. Nevertheless, this is assuming they don't have a cast down, so I had to take my chances. We traded the Monar back and forth, and they play another terror that met another removal. This time, however, I attacked with just the troll, but they had the cast down I mentioned earlier, so I used my deadly dispute to draw me some cards and found a removal for the creature. A mystic joined the party, but if I can't resolve the creep rats, I can clear the board from the flyers they may make. I found a cast down on my own, and in response, they decided to create a bunch of creatures in the process by casting cheap instants so they don't lose the monarch if I attack. However, this was foiled when they saw the creep rats clean on the board, and once again, I took the monarch back. The final Tolarian Terror appeared, but it couldn't get past a turn of the Black Rose, and to make matters worse, I found a Trailblazer's Torch to take the initiative. I did plan another Torn in case they remove one and passed, and upon realizing the game was over, they scooped. Plus, Cyber, a couple of Dures and Eagle Spellbones should be good enough to get ahead in the game and slow them down. Now, the whole point of running Dark Rituals is to play a turn 1 Torn of the Dark Rose or Torch to get the Monarch or the Initiative. And as it's shown, that's exactly what happened here. On the draw, however, we need to be careful, as a turn 2 Agor of Bolas could easily take the Initiative back, especially if we don't have removal for it. Because of this, I scribed two cards to the bottom, and with the help of Lembas, I was able to find a snuff out to get rid of the problem. The opponent on tap, and I decided to pass back the turn. Despite being able to play a turn thanks to the treasure token, as I didn't want to run into counter magic. I then cracked my Lembas and decided to examine my opponent's graveyard and draw a card in the process. I now play my turn with the treasure token. As if it gets counter, I can play my Witch Cottage and put it on top of my library. Thanks to the initiative trigger, I will be able to put it into play next turn for free. The opponent then plays a Murmuring Mystic and passes the turn. And back on mine, I put my turn into play and I decided to attack with my Skeleton token first. They cast a Brainstorm and in response, I use a Snuff Out to kill the Mystic immediately. However, with the Holiday Break, I forgot about some few interactions and missed putting a stop 
at the end of my turn in case I drew removal to kill the bird when they were tapped out. As I tried to kill it on theirs, the cast down met a counter and they were able to take both the monarch and the initiative. Still, it's not all bad news as now I can attack and retake it. More importantly, I was able to put them down to 8 and slam another big threat into the board in the form of a troll. They used a cast down to remove it but decided not to attack as if I find removal, I can just win in the spot. Now, with the help of Alembas, I found a Scything Blade to kill one of the creatures, and we ended up winning the game. The next deck is not new, but one of my favorites toward the last year. Its main goal is to use sacrifice for other creatures like Shamblingast or Greedy Freebooter to generate tokens with cards like Deadly Dispute or Fanatical Offering. However, our main win conditions are Reckless Fire Weaver and Sunshot Militia, that can deal tons of damage to finish off games. If you want to see the full gameplay of it, click the link above, but for now, let's see how it truly shines in a game. The first hand is somewhat good, as we have enough other creatures to sacrifice when we get spells like Deadly Dispute or Fanatical Offering. For now, it's just a matter of hitting our land drops and passing the turn. The opponent seems to be on Golgari Gardens, and if you have seen my previous videos, you will know that I refer to it as the deck that wins by boring you. And yeah, it's not a fun experience at all. Still, our main plan is to do cheap damage here and there with our creatures. Since they are technically bad ones, they still need to get rid of them, as otherwise, they won't be able to resolve the initiative freely without the fear of getting it stolen. After drawing some more cards, little by little, I started to set up. When I play my Fire Weaver, they had removal ready for it, but I had the offering ready to draw cards from it. I then play another creature and passed. They used a Titan Blade to remove it. Back on my turn, I play a Synthesizer that reveal a land. I then sacrifice it and put a Samurai token into play along with a Shambling Ghast. They drew some cards from Reckoner's Bargain and on their turn, they deal with both my creatures. This means that they may have an Avenging Hunter or a Turn of the Black Rose in hand. So I decided to bring back two creatures from the graveyard to my hand with the help of Blood Fountain and pass the turn after using some map tokens to grow my Shambling Ghast. On their turn, they play a Troll of Castle Doom and I was ready to shoot two Galvanic Splash on it. However, with the help of an experimental synthesizer, I found a cleaner removal for it. So, I just had to use one blast and a fighting blade to clear the board. Still, they sacrificed their creature in response to draw some cards. I decided to flip my titan blade and start dealing some damage to them with it and my creatures. Despite that, they play a creep rats and clear the board, play the lambas and pass the turn. Still, the extra value of the tokens my creatures leave behind is very good. With my experimental synthesizer, I eventually filled my board with more creatures. More importantly, I started to deal some extra damage with my Sunshot Militia, which managed to successfully deal 4 damage this turn. The opponent played an Avenging Hunter and got rid of the Militia. However, on her turn after Cracker Out Synthesizer, I found a second copy of it. After forcing them to sacrifice their creature thanks to Galvanic Blast, I was able to take the initiative, put another Samurai on the field after cracking a Synthesizer played a makeshift munitions and dealt an extra couple of damage with the militia's ability, holding up Reckoner's Bargain in case they had removal for it. Of course, they did, as I found a Crib Rats that was attempting to clear the board. Before that happened, I gained some life by sacrificing the militia and drew two more cards in the process. Blood Fountain from the top is excellent, as now I can return two of my best creatures to keep dealing cheap damage with them. Yet again, with the militia who has done at least 8 damage this game and forced my opponent to have removal every single time. They took the initiative after playing a hunter, grew their creature and used a sighting blade. So I sacrificed my pill fever to at least get a token. After that, the opponent just passed the turn. And I feel like I have little somewhere here after drawing a galvanic blast at the end of the turn. I untap, play the fire river to deal an extra damage to them, ping them once more with the militia and use the pill fever's ability to attack and steal the initiative. I sacrificed with the munitions the militia to deal one more damage to them and seal the deal after throwing the blast to their face. For our second game, I didn't feel like bringing any cyber cards, so I ran it back. This hand is okay as it has a decent mix of creatures, lands, and card advantage. The opponent didn't lose any time and decided to get rid of my creature, to which I played two more on my next turn. They then used a deadly dispute, missed a land drop, and passed, so I attack and pass back. They used a titan blade to give me a treasure token and I brought back my Pilfire to attack on my turn. Still, the opponent used removal on the Ghast, which is somewhat works perfectly for us, as we can use one of my sacrifice spells post-combat 
to get extra value from my inferior. After playing an Icor Wellspring, they miss another land drop. So I just happen to play my Fire Weaver, sacrifice an artifact to deal an extra damage with the map token and pass the turn. Of course, on their turn, after finding a third land, they try to kill my Fire Weaver. But I was able to sacrifice it with a deadly dispute to prevent the incidental lifeline of the spinning darkness. I use a synthesizer that revealed a blood fountain and passed the turn to them. After they play a second wellspring and pass the turn, I return two creatures to my hand, and back on my turn, I played them so I didn't have to discard due to hand size. They tried to kill both with drowning sorrow, so I proceeded to draw four new cards and refill my hand. Similar to my previous turn, I just play my creatures and started pinging them for 3 damage this turn with the Militia. The opponent found a Gardens and tried to dispose of my signature creature, but I was ready to draw more cards and make their removal useless. I untap, play a Fire Weaver and deal 3 damage with it after playing a Great Furnace and a Blood Fountain. I then grew one of my creatures with a map token. And attack for the turn. Getting closer to lethal thanks to both of my Galvanic Blast on my hand. They use a cast down to get rid of the Fire Weaver and I attack on my turn and put them on a Galvanic Blast range, waiting for the perfect opportunity to kill them. They just pass the turn back to me and at the end of it, I return two of my creatures to hand. Before I attack, they won three more life and post combat, they were once again at six life. So I played my Militia and started to ping them until they were on a single Galvanic Blast range. They then tried to gain life with Weathered Storm but the second blast sealed the deal to win our second match. Last but not least, there is Iset Tokens, deck that relies on Sleeper Goblin and Rite of Flame to generate crazy tons of mana early in the game. So there are a lot of cards with cards like Brain's Resolve, Reckless Impulse and Meeting of Minds to finish things off with a bunch of tokens and a Goblin Bushwhacker, in a deck that will make your opponent squid pupper if it starts a line. I know there are tons of versions of mono red decks running around, but no one is crazy enough to play Meeting of Minds in it with zero islands. Little do they know that there is more than one way to generate blue mana, and Ralph's reinforcements are excellent at doing so. On turn 2 I was able to chain multiple spells, draw a lot of cards and potentially for someone to never play Pauper again. So we will try to get in another match. This time we are playing against Burst Bully it seems, and it took a couple of turns for us to set up. The trick here is that with Sandstone Needle I can play a Sticker Goblin ahead of schedule. After playing two of them, I had enough mana to unfold my hand and look at more cards from my library, drawing more cards thanks to Meeting of Minds. The opponent passes and I found two more rituals so I used them to draw more cards, more creatures and dealt 14 damage on turn 3 thanks to Goblin Bushwhacker. So yeah, if you are bored of playing the standard mono red lists, this is one that can cause a lot of players to rage quit on you, at least online.